G'day everyone. If you're new here, my name is Sam and today we are working on a hip release practice. It's going to be very gentle in nature. It's all going to be done from the mat so we won't be getting up at any point. If you do have a yoga block, it's going to come in handy and when you're ready, we'll get right into it. So we're going to start down on our back. So have your bottom about halfway down your mat. And as you come on down, you want those feet to set underneath your knees. Make sure the entire length of your spine is on the ground. So pull the shoulder blades back towards each other and allow your tailbone to tuck under a touch. So you feel the low back flatten out against the mat. And from here, we're gonna keep the left leg where it is. Just take the right leg straight up towards the sky. So not trying to overly flex it, but not keep it super duper bent as well. So working towards straight if you can. And then from here, we're just gonna to start to create some big circles in the right ankle joint. So working on full range of motion through the ankle, we have dorsiflexion, we have eversion of the ankle, plantar flexion and inversion of the ankle joint. So just moving around, you may feel little creaks and cracks along the way. I know I do, that's completely fine, hopefully. I know it is for myself, but I can only speak for myself. I'm gonna switch directions there. So moving slow rather than fast. So you were trying to create and draw the biggest circles you possibly could. Once you've done an even amount on both sides, we're gonna find that dorsiflexion. So flex the toes back towards the shin, and then cross your right ankle on the left thigh. Without using the hands to start with, we're gonna try and move the right knee away from us. So Keep flexing that right ankle and then push that right knee away from you. A little more external rotation through the right hip here. You can have your hands elevated off the floor, you can let them rest down, whatever works best for you. Allow your breaths to be calm, your breaths to be steady. So working in active release first before we work a little more of a passive variation. So really working to flex that right foot and then continuing to move the right knee away from you. I know back when I first started lifting weights, it was really, really easy to think that you were going to stretch out at the end of your workout. But sometimes you're pretty pooped by the end of things, you just wanna get out of the gym. But it is super important to stretch not always at the beginning of a workout. Sometimes it's better to leave it towards the end. You want to save all your muscular endurance for your lifts, perhaps, but it's always best to find some mobility as well at some point during your routine. From here, take your right hand, let it catch the back of your left hamstring and then interlace your left fingers around the right. Lift the left knee up and off the mat. So now you're bringing left knee closer towards you as you move that right knee away from you. So this is going to be variation number one. If you're happy there, you can stay. If you have more space, extend the left leg up towards the sky. And imagine you were trying to take your peace fingers around your left big toe. Now, as you imagine, that may come to fruition or it may not. So just see what happens. But if you've got that foot, you're gonna use your right elbow and then push your right knee away from you as you bring the left foot a little closer towards you. Just give yourself a few breaths here. Last full breath in. If you've got the toe, we'll gently release it. If you had the hamstring, we're gonna straighten the leg. So we'll all end up with the leg straight up towards the sky. Then we're gonna shoot the arms down by the side and lift the head and chest up and off the mat. So we'll end up looking like this. Left leg in the air, right ankle still crossed over the left thigh. And then from here, we're gonna lower and lift that left leg a total of five times. So lower the left leg down, let the heel just hover shy of the floor, then lift it straight back up. That's five, four, four. Just really warming up those left hip flexors. Three, four, two. 
and on one. Lift, 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 lift. And this time we're gonna lower the left heel down towards the floor and lift the chest up and off the mat. So we still have that right ankle over the left thigh. We're gonna shimmy our hips back in space and then work to gently fold over your right shin here. If the left hamstring is super tight, you can bend the knee and even take your left forearm underneath the knee if you don't have a block or alternatively use your block and lift that left leg and pop the block underneath there. So as you work to move your chest further forward again, if you have more space, you need to take the inside of your left forearm underneath that right foot and then rest your left hand on top of the shin. Take your right forearm inside of that right thigh. You're working to send your chest further forward and then roll your shoulder blades down the back. Allow the chin to gently drop. Take a long breath. And slowly come up to a seat and set that right foot down flat. And then take your right hand back behind you. Inhale to reach your left arm up. And as you exhale, we're gonna hook that left elbow on the outside of the right thigh and find a gentle twist back over in your right shoulder. So really pressing that arm into leg to lift tall. And gently gazing back over your right shoulder. You can still keep your left foot flexed. So we know that we still have a little piece of our mind down in our foot. As we slowly unravel and come back to center, the left leg is going to stay where it is. We're going to take the right shin and work to set the top of the right foot outside our right hip. So the knees are gonna to work towards each other and this right shin is moving a little wider out. Now this can cause a little bit of uh, imbalance. So if you have your block, you're gonna pop it underneath your sitting bones. So that way the hips are the same height it's a little less intense on the knee joint and you can sit up nice and tall here. So top of the right foot is working to press down. Shin's just a little wider than the thigh and those knees are drawing towards each other. You can use your fingertips for support here on the mat. And then continue to work to activate the left hip flexors here. So flex the left toes towards you, push down through the fingers. We're gonna lift and lower the left leg to the best of our ability a total of five times. So take a breath in. On the exhale, we'll lift and lower. That's one, two, four, three. If you want a little more of a challenge, lean forward for two and one. Lift, 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 lift. Lower back down. Ah, oh, nice work. So you can stay upright. If you're at your, your limit here, you can absolutely stay here. If you really want to feel the right quadriceps and the right hip flexors start to open up, can start to walk your hands back behind you and work to set the forearms down onto the mat. So here I have my right hand just holding the outside of my right foot. The left fingers are just resting on the left edge of the block here. Notice I'm still flexing the left toes towards the face. And again, if this is your limit, you stay right here. If you wanna find more, all we're going to do here is just flex the right glutes. And imagine you were trying to press your pelvis up and off the block. Notice you'll see the front of my pelvis lift up a little bit higher and that's really gonna help release the hip flexors there on the right hand side. If you have more space, you can start to lower all the way down onto the back, but really working to scoop the tailbone under so we're eliminating as best we can the arching here in the low back. Arms can rest down by the side. Top of the right foot still pressing down, pelvis Shooting up, right hip flexors are releasing there. Wherever you are, just be there for three more of your own breaths. Keep them calm in and out through the nose. As we work to come on out, if you're all the way down, you're going to want support. So right fingers can just hold onto the front of the right shin, left fingers around the left edge of that block, 
then press into your elbows to start to lift yourself back up. Nice work. And then we're gonna set our right foot down flat. That's probably going to feel amazing if you're not used to having the top of the foot pressed down. Now from here, I encourage you to rest your right rib cage on your right thigh and notice as I lean forward, I'm getting a lot more range of motion in my right ankle joint. So I'm leaning my body weight against my right thigh and this is giving me a stretch through the Achilles into the calf as well. And it's good using your own body weight because you can back off because you're in complete control here. If you have a little more left, you can bend your left knee. So taking the left knee in front of the right foot and then lean forward a little more and lift your hips off that block. So again, really encouraging as much range of motion as you can. Remember that old myth they used to tell you in the gym that your knee should never go in front of your ankle. Well, it absolutely should. The more range of motion, the more flexion you can get in your knee joint in a controlled range, then the more space you'll have available and the more you'll be able to utilize that knee joint. Of course, you always wanna keep this controlled. This is gonna be our last pose before we come on down to the bottom and reset for the left-hand side. So if you wanna work a little bit of a challenge, if it feels comfortable and the right heel is still flat, piece fingers around the left big toe like we practiced before, and then work to extend the left leg out in front of you. Now we're just resting on the right foot here. Everything else is lifting. If that feels comfortable, you can release the left leg, take the arms out in front. And like we did before, we'll try and lift and lower the left leg a total of five times. Take a breath in. Exhale, we lift and lower. One, for two, for three, for four, and five. Lift, 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 lower down, and then set your bottom down. Extend the right leg long and give that right leg a little bit of a shake. Nice work. So that right leg might be feeling a little more mobile than it was before. I'm gonna come down onto the back and set up for the left hand side here. So feet underneath the knees, right foot's gonna stay where it is. Get as much of the spine grounded on the mat and reach the left leg up towards the sky. Gentle little micro bend, creating nice, big, slow circles there with your left ankle joint. Again, slower the better here. You don't want it to feel like a pepper or a salt grinder as you roll around, so just moving nice and slow. Switching directions when it feels good for you. And then when you feel nice and even, find dorsiflexion. Left ankle will cross on right thigh. Without using the hands at first, move the left knee away from you. And keep that left foot flexing. So just finding where your range is. If you really try and jam that knee away from you as best you can, or as, as hard as you can to begin with, you may start to feel some pressure on the outside of the knee joint, and that's not what we want here. So you never want to push yourself too hard in yoga. It's, it's not that no pain, no gain. That's not the mentality we want in our yoga practice. Sometimes that's applicable when we're in the gym, trying to lift weights, but definitely not in terms of recovery and mobility. We want to stay in our scope and stay in a, a range where you can be in control. And then we're going to work to catch the back of the right hamstring, interlace the fingers. Right knee's now hovering, both feet are flexing. Again, you can stay right here, or if you did on the previous side, extending the right leg. Piece fingers of the right hand wrap around the right big toe. And then left elbow can gently move the left knee away from you. So think more about the forearm being on the inside of the left thigh rather than pushing on the knee joint there. Flexing that left foot. If you have that toe, release it, keeping the leg where it is. And if your leg was bent, release the hamstring, extend the right leg straight up. Arms shoot down by the side, head and chest lifts up off the mat. And a total of five times, we're gonna lower and lift that right leg. So take an inhale, and the exhale will lower, and lift for five, 
four, four, keeping the feet flexed, moving nice and slow. Go for three, four, two, and one. Nice and slow, lift, 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 lift. And this time we'll lower right heel to the floor and come on up to a seat. I'm gonna work to keep the left ankle on the right thigh Shimmy the hips back in space. You can use your block underneath the right knee if you need to, as we work to fold over the left shin. So your hands can just set down by the side, or if you worked that deeper variation before, you can take your right forearm to the outside of that left foot and set that right palm flat on the left shin. Or right shin, my apologies. And then left forearm to the inside of the left thigh. So you're trying to move the left knee away from you. And notice, as I move that left knee away, my chest can start to lift and almost square a little more to the front and back of the mat. So shoulder blades roll down the back. Crown of the head is reaching forward. Right foot staying nice and flexed there. Final breath. As we rise, left foot will set flat. I'm gonna find that gentle twist. So left hand behind the back, inhale, right arm tall. Exhale, hook and twist. So just a gentle twist over the back of that left shoulder. Twist starting from almost the right kidney and wrapping around to the right eyeball as you gaze back over. Sitting up nice and tall here. Inhale together. Final twist as you breathe out. And come back around to center. Right leg will stay where it is. I'm gonna to work to take the top of the left foot just outside the left hip. Again, you may be falling off to the right hand side. So using your block, you can pop it underneath your hips. So I've just got the block here under my right hip and my left hip is slightly elevated. That way it just makes my hips square a little bit more. If both hips are the same height, it's going to be similar to where you're on the floor and you may still be falling off to the right hand side. So left foot's a little wider than the hip, knees draw together. You're flexing those right toes towards the face, sitting up nice and tall. And we're going to work. Hip flexor activation by lifting and lowering this left leg. So keep that quad engaged. And again, the more you lean forward, the more compression you'll find, the more challenging the movement will be. So if you want to lean back to make it Super duper easy you can. You can be straight up or just a fraction in front of you. Take a breath. Exhale, we'll go for five. Lift and lower. Lift and lower. That's two, try and keep the toes pointing straight up. Lift and lower for three. Lift, lower for four. Last one, lift, 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 lift. And lower down. Whew, nice one. Those ones never feel too much fun using those hip flexors. It's always a little bit of a challenge. So again, working to lower back. If you are more towards the back of the mat like I am, you may just want to shift yourself further forward so you have some space to go backwards if that's where you're intending on going. We'll start to lower down towards forearms first. Left fingers can catch the outside of that left foot. Right fingers can just hold onto the outside of the edge of the block there. And tips nice and square, you can start to flex your left glute and press your pelvis up a little bit higher. Finding that deeper release through the left quadriceps, the left hip flexors. Right foot still engaged. And if we're going all the way, start to lower down. Really scooting that tailbone under, eliminating that arch. Feeling the low belly move down towards the floor. Allowing left glute to firm, pelvis to press up, releasing through the front of that left hip. Here for three breaths. Try to keep the left shin and left knee pressing down into the floor rather than lifting up. We are trying to keep it pressing down here. Last breath. Again, use your hands for support, left fingers in front of the left shin, 
right fingers around the block and push through the elbows to lift yourself back up. So good. We're going to set the left foot down just inside the right thigh there and start to lean your weight forward onto your left ankle. So that'll probably feel quite nice after all that plantar flexion of the ankle. Move you back to the dorsiflexion. And again, notice I've just got my hands wrapped around my left thigh here. You can do whatever you want with yours. You're more relying on the, the weight of your torso to allow you to move a little bit deeper. Gentle little bop back and forwards just to see what the ankle says, how the ankle reacts. And again, if you want to take it deeper, you can bend that right knee. Take the right knee in front of your left foot. You can hop off the block here. So notice the hips are now lifting up and off the mat, I'm leaning a little more weight forward, really encouraging more flexion of the ankle joint. And if you want to take it that one step further, again, this is the last pose before we come on down. Piece fingers of the right hand around the right big toe. Work to extend that right leg out in front of you. Chest will lift, hips still elevated up and off the floor here. So feel your left ankle start to stabilize. Feel your chest starting to rise. And if we're going for the lift and lower, we'll flex that right foot, reach the arms out in front, take a breath. And exhale, we'll lift and lower right leg for one, for two, keep that chest lifting for three, four, four, and five. Lift, 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 lift. And lower the right ankle down, the hips down and extend the left leg out long in front, giving those legs a little, little shake out. And then to finish off, I'm gonna give you an option here. So let's assume that the two sticky points in the hips are going to be the hamstrings or the inner thighs, just for today we're assuming. So if you're feeling a little tighter in your hamstrings, I encourage you to keep the legs long Use a block under the knees if the hamstrings are tight, and then start to move forwards and fold over your thighs. Allowing shoulder blades to roll back, chest to move forwards, and crown of the head to lead the way. So this is if the hamstrings are feeling a little more sticky. If it's more inner thigh work, same principles in the torso, but we take the soles of feet together and let the knees fall out wide and you can catch hold of the feet here. So again, as we move forward, shoulder blades roll back, Chest moves forward, crown of the head is going to lead the way. So one of those two postures is where you're going to finish your practice. See if you can be there in whatever shape you've chosen with your eyes closed and keeping your breath steady. video will stop by itself so I encourage you to be exactly where you are 100% hopefully your hips your legs will thank you later I personally thank you so much for watching the video if you consider subscribing and liking the video that would help tremendously we'll see you all again soon peace